Hi, thanks for your questions about PLE concept and pedagogical models in e-learning. They're not easy questions, and that's good, because I think some of the thinking about PLEs can be a little bit simplistic, and certainly in focusing on the pedagogy, you're asking the right questions. But first of all, let's go and have a look at your questions then. Uh, you say, what's the pedagogical model you follow as an online teacher and why? I suppose the first proviso I've got to say is I'm probably not an online teacher. I don't actually teach students. I do do quite a lot of online teaching, if you like, in terms of continuing professional development, uh, which I tend to call training. And I think there's some differences between teaching and training. And I'm particularly interested in working with groups of people who don't have previous experience of online learning, neither are they enrolled necessarily on programs, but they are interested in their own professional development, uh, particularly related to their practice. And the group at the moment I'm particularly working with are careers advisors in the UK, who may be advising young people or may be advising adults about their potential career. And they have actually have a, a requirement for uh, professional development as part of their, um, part, uh, as a condition for their work. And obviously the companies which employ them are looking for new ways of providing access to learning opportunities and particularly looking for cost-effective ways and looking for ways which scale up easily. Now, what pedagogical model am I following? Well, lately I've got, I suppose I would vaguely say constructivist model, but I'm a little bit cynical uh, uh, about all, all these models. Let's break it down a little bit more. I'm particularly interested in how you can scaffold learning, how you can take people from one stage in their learning, either deeper in their learning, or to new understandings which they wouldn't have had before. I'm interested in how they themselves can make meanings out of their learning, rather than me telling them this is what they have to learn. And I wouldn't presume, really, to tell a lot of these people about their jobs because they know more about them than me. I'm there to support them exploring and making new meanings and new understandings. And I'm especially interested in how they can collaborate in doing it. If there's one model I've become interested in lately, it's something called the CBLM, which is the Collaborative Blended Learning Model. And it's a model which has been developed by a colleague of ours in Pontedusky called Maria Perifanu, who's particularly been looking at web quests and an evolution from what she calls WebQuest 1.0, which was a fairly instructivist uh, model of online learning, to WebQuest 2.0, which she's allied to this model of collaborative blended learning. But as I say, uh, I'm less interested in overall names of pedagogic models than I am in pedagogic processes. So it's that process of scaffolding learning and how we can uh, act as facilitators to help that scaffolding and that process of collaboration and that process of meaning making, which I think is the critical thing. And all those are, to my mind, central to people taking control of their own learning, but especially relating learning to practice and I think in the formal education systems, we've often been quite poor at relating learning to practice. So your question number two, students from Portugal. You have been developing some serious thinking on PLEs. Thank you. How important are they in the learning process? I think personal learning environments are critical to any learning process using technology because at the end of the day, what I think PLEs refers to is how we take all the technology and the opportunities which technology gives us 
for learning and how we shape it. The German, German words and the German word. The German word is gestalten, how we can design or shape those to suit our own learning. And in that way, I think personal learning environments are as much an outcome of learning as content. They say content is key. I think process is key. How we learn, how we learn to learn, how we learn to interact with artifacts and how we shape and use those artifacts to shape our own learning. And I think that's going to be critical to the future processes of online learning and to an extent that PLEs, as I understand them, are part of that process of shaping, taking artefacts, often things which weren't designed for learning, uh, 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 and using them uh, for, for that purpose, designing and developing them ourselves for that purpose and collaborating with others in the course of doing that, then I think that's the future of online learning. And in fact, I think I wrote in a blog earlier this week, the one thing I'd wish for in the year 2012, although I'm not hopeful, would be get rid of the E, get rid of the B, get rid of the I, all those things we put in front of learning and to say there's learning and these are all part of it. Do I advise my students to follow a specific model or do I give them full freedom in building their PLA? I think I'd go back at that point to the shaping idea I don't really mind what they use for their learning, but I'm also aware that many of the people who I have involved in these professional development programmes are lacking in both competence and confidence. And the confidence may be more important to the competence in using Web 2.0 tools, in using computer-based artefacts for learning, and therefore, I need to support and guide them and suggest to them ways in which they might use it and to create spaces for them to use and to create help and support where I can for using those spaces. So that doesn't mean I have they have to use those spaces, but I will establish spaces, on, sometimes on Google Docs, sometimes on Wikis, I use Wikis a lot, for, for them to work in. And if they can find a better way, and in fact, often I'd prefer they use the blog, but I'm well aware that taking up and establishing and using a blog, whilst it's now very easy with tools like Posterus or, or with WordPress or Blogger, it's still quite a big commitment in terms of process again. So I guess I don't uh, advise them to follow a special model. Uh, I do give them full freedom, but I will give them support and help rather than telling them to just go off and do it themselves. And that particular support and help, which I think that trainers or teachers need to do, is very often in creating spaces uh, for collaborative and individual work uh, in creating that learning environment, allowing them the tools to shape their own learning environments. Now, your next question is a tricky one, isn't it? Well, they're all tricky. Ever since the concept of PLE appeared, there have been several discussions about this issue, and the concept itself has been evolving. In what way has the PLE interfered in the change of e-learning pedagogical models or is that PLE merely a tool that you can use and take some benefit from in the already existing practices without real influence in changing them? Woof, what a question. Well, first of all, I'm on record as saying I don't think PLEs are merely a tool. I think PLEs are part of a process and practice of learning, although obviously PLEs utilise tools. And to the extent that uh, is it a PLE which is driving change? Well, I guess if students are using their own technology, which they are, and rejecting institutional spaces for exchanging ideas whilst establishing their own, yes, that very much is driving and forcing change in institutional practice. On the other hand, if institutions themselves, or particularly teachers in institutions, start using social media 
and encouraging students to exchange in the wider world, establishing blogs, using all kinds of other tools, then that itself would drive the process of the take up of PLE. So I guess it's an interaction between them. Has the PLE interfered, or I think you probably mean influenced, in change of e-learning pedagogical models? Probably, yes, again, but it's the ways in which, of course, different pedagogical models and different pedagogical processes also lead and influence the establishment of PLEs, which is important. So I don't think it's a one-way flow either way. And I'd once more go back to pedagogical processes rather than pedagogical models at this point. It's the particular processes of learning, of knowledge construction, of meaning making and of collaboration, which I think are particularly critical in establishing PLEs. Now, your question number five. Many universities and colleges offering, on offering online courses tend to adopt pedagogical models quite close to traditional teaching and learning centred on transmitting contents in closed uh, environments, LMS slash VLE, controlled by the institution. How should we overcome this traditional approach and persuade the universities to change their practices? Ooh, that's very, very difficult. I mean, first of all, yeah, the universities are looking for scalable staff. They're looking for management staff. And I mean, the learning management system uh, words say it all, isn't it? It's not a process for, it's not a tool designed for supporting learning. It's a, a tool designed, a system designed for managing learning. So I think the first thing is that we need to focus far more on the teaching and learning process in universities rather than tools which manage large scale institutions and are rather becoming like factories. Uh, in the present economic period, mind, LMSs, VLEs are seen as extremely efficient and extremely effective, so it will be difficult. It, it has to be said, mind you, if you talk to any of the VLE manufacturers, and I usually go to online educa and go around the stands and talk to them and have an odd glass of wine courtesy of Blackboard, then they will say that they, they are now moving towards PLEs themselves and that Blackboard is a PLE, Frontier is a PLE or other Pearsons now. I don't think they are PLEs. But I mean, it's interesting that that reflects pressure from the institutions for the use of more software, social software in processes of learning, particularly blogs and microblogging, and reflects pressure from change from the students themselves who want more freedom to uh, be able to use the tools with which they're familiar. Uh, I would put a proviso in mind that repeated surveys of students say that students are less confident and competent in the use of technology than sometimes we assume. And that blows that whole uh, digital generation stuff, what was it called, Generation X, but no, the, the other stuff which said that we've got a new generation have a completely different relation to technology. Hmm, yes and no. I mean, kids today do use devices, especially mobile devices, very proficiently and very much interweaven into their lives, but that doesn't mean that they're all confident and competent, particularly in the use of those tools for learning, and they will need support. How we overcome that traditional approach? We build our, our, on exemplary practice where it exists. We set up projects for learning. We talk to students. We support that change. We showcase that change in, in all those ways we can. There are no easy, quick fixes to it, in my view. And I don't... Oh, and staff development is particularly critical in that respect. And repeated surveys will suggest that staff want more staff development, but that that staff development, that professional development in using technology has to be related to actual opportunities for practice in the workplace. And in this case, the workplace is obviously the university or the college. Uh, and we've written a lot about how we can make those professional development processes more effective uh, and more engaging than they presently are. And your last question. E-learning is becoming more and more relevant, both in formal and informal education, and it's seen as essential in lifelong learning processes. 
How do you see the future of e-learning bearing in mind the technological development and the social and economical changes which will come along with the evolution of society? Well, if you include in the evolution of society a bunch of rich bankers ripping us all off, then I would agree with you. I probably think that's not the evolution of society. I think that's the evils of capitalism, rather. Uh, and that's obviously that and the recession it's led to is putting severe pressure on education today. I very much see that there's a fight going on for the future of education. Is education a right for individuals, a right for society, or is education a commodity to be bought and sold? I think there's an increasing fight over that. I obviously see education as a right, as something we create, uh, and I think we have to fight for that. But secondly, the thing I always talked about with relation to technology is we've used technology in education to give more facilities for those who already have them, to provide training for managers, to provide extra facilities for students who are already enrolled in universities. The majority of facilities have been for the middle and upper classes, the people who traditionally have had low qualifications and have little or no access to formal education and training have gained very little from the advances in educational technology. And part of the process and one of the reasons I'm keen on personal learning environments is the idea that we can use technology for learning throughout society uh, very much was as was imagined in the book Deschooling Society, very much as Freire had posed the idea of education, so PLEs form part of a process of educational change, and technology allows everyone in the workplace and in the community to access to ideas, to access to knowledge, and access to online spaces to debate and grow their own knowledge and learning. And that education, therefore, becomes an integrated part of society as a whole, rather than something that stands behind institutional walls and fences in our schools and universities. I'm not over-optimistic, but I'm not pessimistic. I think that all these issues continue, and I think your focus throughout your questions on pedagogy, you're asking exactly the right questions. I hope you're all becoming to the PLE conference being held in Avera in Portugal in, I think it's July of this year, Avera in Melbourne, and I'll have a chance to talk to you face to face, and I'd urge you to put in an abstract to this conference based on the really interesting work you're doing as part of your own learning. Thanks very much, and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye.